Matt Stepp, Dave Campbell's Texas Football, back here at the Texas High School Coaches Association and Convention in beautiful San Antonio, Texas. We are here with the head coach from Lubbock Cooper ISD, the Liberty Patriots, Coach Joe Sexton. And, uh, Coach, appreciate you taking a few minutes to chat with us today to talk no about your uh, your program. Glad to have – glad uh, you could have us. You know, you come down to coaching school, and it's such a big event every year. It, it just seems like it gets bigger and bigger. For you, you know, I know you've been to a few of these things in the I've past. I've been to one or two, yes. Uh, uh, you know, how excited are – when you're coming down here, you know, how ex- does this kind of just tell you the school year and the academic and athletic year is about to get kicked off and you just have that, that excitement in your – Right. In your, you know, like I said, I've been to a few of these, and it's always just the, you know, when we get through, we're about to kick off and off we go. So mm-hmm. it's it's always exciting to come to coaching school and see a lot of guys that you've coached against, coached with, uh, went to college with. I was just talking to a guy over here that I went to, to Tech with a long time ago. Okay. And so, and a lot of the guys my age are already retiring. So Yeah, uh, yeah there's a few. And you, you probably run into kids, you know, I'm sure you're running now a lot of guys who, who you coached and now they're coaches. And, right. and, and that's that's the great thing about the profession though right you're, you're giving back and it, it, it's, it's got to make you proud of those guys that you coached them and now you see that they're doing well and, and they're they're good husbands or good wives or they're good people right. in the community and and their coaches got to make you feel good but i guess you know also like man i, I remember remember when you were 16 years old and you were a, a, a butthead in class right well we have one on our staff uh, you know I've, that was probably one of my first hires was uh, getting this kid i coached him uh, when he played at lubbock cooper and he, okay. he's turned out to be phenomenal and he's a great coach and so was really excited to get get him on our staff there you go well let's talk about your your, your ball club and and and, and i think uh, the 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 word around your program is excitement yes you know you, you're a new program and, and and you know this year you get to compete for a district championship and compete for a playoff spot how is the how how, how much excitement has there been around the program and how is the summer and the off season gone knowing that you're actually going to be competing i mean you y'all y'all played a sub varsity schedule last year but right. i know there's something different when you're competing for a playoff spot and you're in that you're playing on friday night on the big lights you know most of our staff you know when our season was over last year we were all just kind of like well what do we do now Mm -hmm, you know because all of our uh you know we didn't get to go to the playoffs and so it was kind of a kind of a downer at the end of the year you know we weren't chasing any gold balls or anything like that but the coaches are excited uh our players are excited you know our our baseball team went you know quite a ways in the playoffs so so they're getting a lot of a lot of experience uh you know, we're playing big time games, and I think that's going to pay off for us too. Uh, you know, a lot of our kids have been out playing baseball all summer long, and I've talked to a few of them. You know, this last week, mm-hmm. they've been in and out of summer workouts because we've got several that are all over the country playing baseball. Sure, sure. So, okay. uh, I think they're ready to start some football, and I, I know all of our coaches are. I bet, I bet. So, so when, when we look at you know your your, it's interesting talking to coaches at new programs how they kind of build that. First first non-district schedule and I know depending on the makeup of your team and that kind of thing you try to cater it to that for you guys what was your approach coming in and how, how did you get your non-district schedule lined up and who do you, who do you have just trying to find games mm-hmm. uh, you know there's a there's a stigma about I guess Lubbock Cooper everybody you know wants to stay away from Lubbock Cooper you sure. know uh, there's coach Darden right there so he's, he's, he's won a few ball games in, in the past yes he has he has but you know for us we were just trying to find games uh-huh. uh, you know not everybody wanted to play us and they were like oh you're Lubbock Cooper and sure, like, sure well you know we're only freshmen sophomores and juniors mm-hmm. you know so um, so we pick up uh, new home week one, okay. which that was a uh, really know, good good program. Yes, and they're growing like crazy too. Yes, they How are. much longer do you think they'll stay at two A school? Not, not much longer. Not right? much longer. No, <laughs> no, not much longer. Um, then we go to Idaho, and then we've got a traditional program. Oh, there, yes. very good program. Yeah. Yes, you know, Coach White does a great job over there. Um, then we've got Midland Greenwood, Seminole. Um, two good teams for yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we've got we've got six non-district games and then then we jump into that district schedule you know it was kind of nice to have a have a dry run that first year to sure. you know a lot of our coaches when we sit down at the end of the year we're like all right we like that we like that I didn't like that, so let's change that. You know, not many people get the opportunity to do that, mm-hmm. and so I think it helped us quite a bit. When when you got the got the job, and and, and you, you, I think you had a little bit of a of, of an edge because you not not far up the road in Canyon, you know, Coach Cummings at West Plains kind of did a similar thing, starting a new program there. Right. You know, 
a lot of guys, you know, starting a new program do, doesn't happen very often, especially out in West Texas. Did right. you have a chance to – did you call Coach Cummings and kind of pick his brain about maybe some, some do's and don'ts? Because well, really who I talked to – well. Who I talked to more than anything was uh, Toby Tucker, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the AD, AD there. there. Well, the former AD at Canyon. Because yeah. I was uh, assistant AD there for a little bit at Lubbock Cooper. Uh, and I would see him at AD conferences and stuff and yeah. just go, hey, what did y'all do here? What did y'all do there? So it's, uh, you know, the I guess the challenging part that first year was just trying to get equipment. All right, what do we need? Mm-hmm. Uh, going through the list. Because you Every- need everything. Yeah, we need everything. We didn't even have a football. So... You know, you're you're looking. I had a list on my desk, and any time a coach would come in my office, I go, "Hey, look at this list. See if I'm forgetting anything." Mm-hmm. And because uh, you co- don't want to need it, and then realize you forgot right. it when you need it, right? So one of our coaches was like, uh, "Hey, you don't have footballs on here? Oh, crap." Got to have some that footballs. That seems to be important. Yeah, it's, think, it's, yeah. Need, yeah, need it's those, a big right? deal. Yeah. So, so, but it's you don't think about the little things, but right. it, there's just so much that goes into to starting a program right. from the ground up. So. It's been it's been a challenge for sure. Uh, but I have some incredible coaches on our staff: uh, Dwayne Tolliver, Barry Newton. Uh, those are veteran coaches. Sure. Coach Tolliver's uh, been a head coach for a long time, and good guy. Don't tell him I said that. He's good. Guy. I won't. I won't <laughs> tell him that. He'll get the big head. Yeah. But you know, just having those guys around, coach. Newton's been a uh, he's a phenomenal uh, offensive line coach and the kids play really hard for him same thing with coach Tolliver and then we've got some young coaches that that bring that energy Uh, you know a couple of the people have asked me you know why do you have so many young coaches I'm like well we got to have energy yeah you know we can't all be old and you got Cranky. Gerber on staff, right? We got Nick Gerber. Nick Gerber, yeah. And, that's uh, a blast in the past right there. That guy threw for a few yards there at level. Yeah, he ended. did. And uh, we just picked up his brother this last year, so we've got two Gerbers on our staff. So I, bet, I bet Nick probably wants your offensive coach to call pass plays quite a bit. He's oh, probably, yeah. he's, he's wanting to sling it. He's, he's got that old gunslinger in him, doesn't he? Yeah, he likes to throw the football. And, you know, we've got, uh, you know, now that we have the other Gerber, uh, he's going to help with our offensive line, and it's uh, – those two kids are great. It's awesome. It's good to have that energy, right? Yes. Heck but yes. those young guys, they become sponges and learn from. You know, it's good to have those guys to. to they're kind of that bridge between the the older coaches and the and the kids, right. and kind of can, can maybe they they understand the kids slang a little bit better and all all the. Oh things, yeah, you know? definitely. I I have to pull Coach Quentin and Coach Gerber every now and then. And go, all right, what do he say? <laughs> Uh, when you look at the UIL and realignment, you mentioned you're in a five-team district, so you had to find six non-district games. But when you look at your district, you know what what, what challenges do those guys bring to the table? I mean, I, I know it's oh, a good district. Gosh, you know the first one that stands out is Estacado. Sure, you yeah. know they're. They're going to be. Tradi- a, they're, they, you know, it's, it's never a time when Estacado is not not playing good no, football, right? You know, they're going to be a handful. You know, really for us, you know, we're not going to have any seniors, so we're going to have. Uh, you know, and really, here comes Coach Gerber now as we speak. They got him working. They do. They put they put him to work, didn't they? Uh, they sure did. Um, but all of our teams in our district are going to be a challenge for us, just for the mere fact that they all have seniors and. You know, we don't have any seniors yet. We've got about, oh, well, probably 16, 17 juniors, and the rest of them are going to be sophomores. That's a lot of, lot of youth. So. Lots of youth. And that, that, that growth from being a sophomore to a junior and a senior is a big, you know, mature, right. physically, physical maturity, right? You know, just the size factor that we're going to see, you know, a lot of the a lot of the teams we're going to play have got big offensive and defensive lines, sure. and we don't have any of that just yet. But our skill kids are uh, really good. I'm, I'm – Really excited about those skill kids. Uh, and, you know, our offensive and defensive line are going to be good, no doubt. They're just not going to – it's going to be hard for them to match up size-wise. It's a, a make-up for a technique and effort, right? Right. So, uh, you know, obviously you're a new the, the area is growing fast, and Lubbock Cooper splits into two high schools. Right. What's the future? I mean, you guys are 4A Division two right now. I, yes, I'm sir. assuming you probably don't anticipate being 4A. What's the growth, kind of the future growth look like? Do you got, think you'll stay Division two for one more cycle? or? I think we probably will. Um, probably that second cycle in 26 i think we might jump up to 4a d1 sure sure and then here before long i'm gonna say you know my guess is 28 we'll probably be a 5a school okay and then that then at that point you know does the do you you feel like you guys in lubbock cooper may end up being the same is is it kind of the plan for y'all to be similar size schools i think so um i mean but going out there i mean there's the growth is crazy it's well you get you know you've got monterey coronado you know friendship's about to build a second school yeah they're so, building the same high school too you yeah. know we could be in a in a district with all lubbock schools and man that'd be, be great. nice for travel right oh it'd be great because I, I know right now you're you're having you're having to hit the road a little bit Perry, perryton and, and borger perryton borger uh 
Our first home Loveland game. Loveland is not too bad, but Perryton and Borger are pretty pretty good road trips. Oh, our other non-district game is Fort Stockton. So Yeah, another long road trip. I'll, t- I'll, I'll give you a tip. Go eat at Tacos OJ in Fort Stockton. That's a... Uh, that's some good stuff right there. I want to say I've eaten there before because we go out there to play El Paso in baseball. And yeah, oh, they have a nice baseball field. Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, Tacos have. OJ is the place. So, Well, Coach, I uh, appreciate your time. Uh, you congratulations Thank on the you. new program and everything. Appreciate you topping by to chat with us. And uh, good luck in 2024. And we appreciate what you do for student athletes Thank in the you. State of Texas. Appreciate you covering high school athletics. Thanks, Coach.